Hey folks, here at OS Reviews, you're watching our video review of the Insignia Flex. This is an 8-inch Android tablet running on Marshmallow version 6.0, and it sells for an extremely low-cost sub-$50, which is competitive with devices like the Amazon Fire and other entry-level tablets you'll find, and it offers actually pretty good performance for most folks if you want a backup or entry-level device to take with you when you're traveling. It has a Good display, it's not 1080p, but it's bright, vibrant, and well saturated, has a fairly decent build, and the processor itself also handles some entertainment and gaming fairly well, despite not being top of the line, of course. So let's take a quick look at the hardware first. On the front, we have access to that 720p IPS display, which again is very bright. Uh, on the downside, it is very glossy, which means that under direct sunlight, it will glare, and also as you start using it, it does attract fingerprints fairly easily. There's going to be virtual on-screen controls for the typical Android uh, menus and going back to the, the top. Home. You have access to the front-facing 2-megapixel camera, and along the top edge, you also have access to the 3.5mm headphone port, along with a micro SD card slot for expanding the 16 gigabytes of built-in flash storage if you want to plan on consuming more media as well as downloading apps. There's also the micro USB port for charging, and it takes around three hours to completely charge. It doesn't feature Qualcomm's quick charge technology. However, it will last you for a day or two before you need to recharge it again with some light usage in between, so decent battery life. The other edge features access to the power on off switch along with a volume rocker. These are pretty nice place placements and they feel tactile and responsive enough in day-to-day -day usage despite being made out of plastic as opposed to aluminum or a more expensive metal. There's also access to a rear-facing speaker, which gets pretty loud even though it's a little hollow sounding at higher volume outputs. However, it's again a downside and a compromise the company had to make to get the cost low. Otherwise, I would recommend plugging in a pair of headphones for the best audio experience. And there's also a little bit of branding. You can see it's using an Intel Batro quad-core processor, which is very typical at this price point. It's a common processing package we've seen a lot of times before. And benchmarking is decent, you know. It's not exactly optimized for Android, I would say. It's slightly better for Windows 8 and Windows 10. Seems a little smoother. With that being said, it runs well enough, even if you are doing a few games and uh, browsing the web interacting with uh, complex web pages, it handles those things fairly well. There's also a 2 megapixel rear facing camera if you want to snap some quick emergency shots. It's autofocus enabled, although it lacks a LED flash or a proximity mirror. So let's take a quick look at the interface here. You're greeted to a very stock version of Android 6.0 uh, Marshmallow, which is a good thing. There isn't any bloatware installed. Everything you see is a standard Google, including access to Gmail and access to the Chrome browser and YouTube. And if you want to download more, you could always go to the Play Store and interact with more games and productivity tools. So it really is a very lightly skinned version of Android. Um, that's nice to see. So the default wallpaper has been changed by Insignia, which is again the in-house brand for Best Buy, but you can easily change this into something else. And it includes fairly typical animated wallpapers if you want to go with that. So as an example, let's check out Bubbles. And you can see this is interactive. So as you start to touch the display, uh, there's going to be uh, kinetic movements that occur on screen. So very typical, not too much options. Again, you can install more if you want to by yourself uh, through the Play Store. So again, the display here is very bright. It's a vibrant and colors are actually fairly accurate. It doesn't have any tint in terms of looking yellowish or bluish and they're pretty natural. So um, you do get a pretty enjoyable experience if you're watching movies or for general web browsing. Again, the display though is very glossy. So the downside is you will notice a lot of glare as you move it under artificial light and also outdoors. But um, that's pretty typical. There's not too much matte displays that we find on Android tablets. So you can see here we have access to the typical Google apps, including access to Chrome, again, Gmail, Maps, Google Play services, Drive, Photos, and Hangouts. So all of those standard tools are here. And again, there's no other bloatware. If you go into the main drawer, you have access to just a file manager and everything you would expect on a clean install of Android 6.0 Marshmallow. Just to verify that, I'm going to go into the settings now and show you guys that indeed it's running on Android 6.0.1, which is again a pretty impressively up-to-date version of Android on such a low-cost piece of hardware. So again, this is the standard little game that you might play inspired by uh, Flappy Birds, where you have to navigate the Android figure through these marshmallow gates and try to see how many 
points you can score. So here we have a few applications run. You can already see that it's very smooth in the main interface. Uh, just general navigation is extremely snappy and responsive. So no real complaints there. You only notice some slowdown if you have, let's say, 10 or more tabs open in our quick testing of the unit. So taking a look at the camera first, again, it's, it is a autofocus enabled sensor, which is already a lot better than Six focus any. sensors you might find. Uh, on other devices in this price category. There's a standard array of options, including adding grids if you want more alignment. You can swap to the front-facing camera, which is the same quality, and it actually captures a decent amount of light, so it makes for a good option for doing Skype and video calls with friends and family members. Finally, there's access to things like self-timers, and also you can set some quick filtering effects um, if you want to give a negative, mono, normal, sepia look. And of course, you can do some post-image processing uh, if you want to try and upload these onto social media. But the quality isn't, I would say, nearly as good as a smartphone, even though it offers autofocus. And colors are actually surprisingly, uh, again, accurate. You can see that if I zoomed into text, here's another example, you can see that the details are definitely visible, and it has this cool effect where you can focus on one spot and of course the background kind of fades out. So it's good enough for a tablet, but tablets in terms of cameras are meant for emergency situations. I wouldn't really use them for anything other than that, but you get the impression in moderate lighting it does work well enough, especially on such a entry level device. You can edit it and of course share it with friends and family and records 1080p HD video as well, which uh, is also pretty decent, but it uh, lacks optical image stabilization. So there's gonna be quite a bit of jerkiness if you move around in your shots. So next, let's take a quick look at the web browsing experience. It offers Chrome as default browser, which is a very capable browser, and uh, loading times are fairly swift. Of course, you have the desktop-like experience in terms of all these tabs, and of course, a benefit of Chrome is there's a new syncing feature between all the browsers you use. So when you sign in for the first time, it pulls in all of the bookmarks and contacts you have logged in on your desktop browser so everything is imported and ready to go and you can turn that function off too if you don't want to use it so here we can tap and take a quick look at the keyboard again very stock experience including the virtual on-screen controls on the very bottom the screen here is actually surprisingly sensitive even though it's a little bit plasticky since it's not using corning's gorilla glass technology but um, it's responsive it offers multi-touch so everything in terms of typing is swift and quick and even using it as kind of a real keyboard by setting it down on a surface works pretty well. So we can take a quick look at the New York Times, which I commonly use as a benchmark for more complex sites, since there are many flash and interactive elements that uh, low-powered and entry-level tablets and phones sometimes struggle with. But you can see here over Wi-Fi, it actually loads up relatively quickly. The screen, again, is actually very detailed. It's bright, and the camera here isn't doing it so much justice, but you can tell that uh, it actually is pretty impressively loaded and rendered uh, on such a short notice. Uh, we have to wait a few seconds longer, of course, for some of the ads to completely load, but for the most part, you do get uh, a fairly good web browsing experience on even complex news sites. So I can zoom in, and of course, it re-renders the text a little bit, and afterwards, I can also zoom out and if I'm interested in something, I can tap and hold to open it, let's say, in another tab uh, or in incognito mode as well. So Speaking of the YouTube client, let's take a quick look at how it works by loading up a video for demonstration purposes. And you can see that it loads up again very quickly. This is, um, it seems like an ad that we can skip. The future was staring us right in the and we can adjust the volume as well by tapping on the side here but I think the main takeaway is that it gets reasonable loud and it definitely fills up small rooms and spaces quite well. So for some quick videos, you'll be completely fine. But for longer experiences and especially for music listening, again, I do recommend plugging in a pair of headphones to get a better audio experience. You can see it loads up completely fine. I can scrub between the video and after a few seconds, it will load. Again, the screen here is extremely nice in terms of the viewing angles and the color saturation and balance. Again, I always come down, come back to this point. It's not the most pixel dense display, but at such a low cost, I was just really impressed by how well the display looked. In fact, it bested some of the other tablets I've reviewed that maybe costs uh, two times the price. Um, so really a great display and one of the highlights here. So of course I can also add this to playlists and I can take a look at comments, change the quality of the video from 720p to full HD if I want to and look at comments located on the side. So 
really nice experience for consuming media, for watching videos and browsing the web. As you can see there, there was no real issues at all. You can multitask between these with ease. So let's take a look at some of the other apps on here. They're basically just very typical utility options like FM radios or the calculator you can see here. There's access to a calendar, which offers some syncing functions with uh, Google Calendar as well. So you can push notifications from your phone onto the tablet. There's also a clock function for setting alarms, which again, since the speaker is quite loud, it works pretty well. And again, with all these drive functionalities built in, it makes for a great productivity tool as well. If you are comfortable with using online editing tools like Google Word, Google PowerPoint, Google Excel, you can get a lot done. And connecting a Bluetooth keyboard enhances it and makes it almost a pseudo desktop or working experience. It's really good enough for that. One limitation though is it doesn't have a HDMI port. So you have to rely on wireless mirror casting for connecting this to an external monitor if you want to really transform it into a larger working experience. But I think the main emphasis here is just on the grab and go, very portable tablet, which is super affordable, great for kids, great for as a backup, um, especially if you don't want to break something more expensive when you are maybe traveling abroad. And um, you can see that everything else, including the sound recorder, just uses the microphone, which works well enough. It's not noise canceling, but it works as a proof of concept. And uh, more importantly, for video chatting and hangouts, it does a nice job of that. So as far as playing back games are concerned, I wouldn't really recommend this exclusively for gaming, even though it's capable of gaming. It's a quad-core chipset coupled with one gig of RAM. So latest titles will play, but you will experience a little bit of drop frames and jerkiness here and there. And if you are playing back a graphically intensive game, I would recommend closing out the other applications in the background just to make that experience a little bit stronger. Um, but all in all, you know, it works really well. This is the max screen brightness, which is very visible, and I can turn it all the way down for easier uh, experience when reading at night. There isn't an ambient light sensor, but there is a proximity sensor on here. GPS signals are also fairly strong, so you can install um, you know, geotagging functions on using the camera. You can open maps. It will find your location for navigation. It's really quite impressive. You have all these features built on in, and again, battery life is also decent as well. At the end of the day, for such a low-cost tablet, I was quite impressed with the Insignia Flex 8. Insignia's tablets uh, in the past have always been good representations of the value that you can get at such low price points, and this tablet is no exception. It runs extremely well, and it's a you know, amazingly low cost, and compared to the Fi Amazon Fire, you get a much cleaner install of Android, which I think lots of people will uh, appreciate. I don't think it has as much warranty and support as the Fire tablets, uh, which also offers Amazon Alexa, which is pretty cool. But in terms of the hardware, they're basically the same. And um, of course, if you want to customize your tablet loaded with more of your own media, this is a better direction to go with. And of course, if you like Amazon services, but you don't want to get ads on your main screen, you can always pick this up and install some Amazon apps through the Play Store, and that works as well. More than anything, I'm just always impressed by how these low-cost uh, tablets can still work so amazingly well. This one with its great display, it's not perfect. It's a little bit plasticky in terms of its build, uh, but a few compromises aside, it makes for a tremendous value at this price point. Just like the Insignia Flex 8, which ran on Windows uh, 8 and 8.1 that were reviewed a few years back. And uh, this one keeps that tradition alive at a lower cost and running on version of Android. So you can check out more details about this particular tablet in our official written review. But for now, this has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. This has been the Insignia Flex 8 running on Android 6.0 Marshmallow.